Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We're very excited to uh, take you on a tour of the features and functionality of the Ontario East EDC Zoom Prospector tool. Uh, very excited to be here today with my colleague, Russ Riblet, and of course, with uh, your colleagues from Ontario East, uh, Jay Ammer and Lucy Medeiros. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. And with that, um, Jay, let me turn this over to you. I know you had a few words you wanted to say at the start. Great, thanks, Alyssa. And uh, Russ, it's great to have you on board as well. I know many of our members have uh, connected with you at EDCO in the past, uh, over the many 15 years, and we're, <laughs> we're finally able to do some work with uh, GIS planning. So um, we're, we're really excited about this tool, and I want to just say to the team, thank you all for updating with your properties. It's This tool is as useful as you make it. And uh, today we're going to learn a lot about some of the uh, features and uh, how we can start promoting uh, the site. We're obviously going to do targeted promotions, but it, it's going to be out there and we want people to find us as well and find your properties. Uh, just a quick refresher, we are targeting our key sectors, advanced manufacturing, food and beverage processing, uh, logistics and transportation, and suitable properties for those sectors, which are our highest priorities, uh, are what we're allowing to be accessed here. And that would be a minimum of 5,000 square feet, a minimum of one acre of land, and um, anything above that is, is certainly welcome on the property as we get started and get things moving. And we are, uh, there are a few little uh, adjustments uh, just with uh, boundaries and community names. And uh, we are working with Russ and Jeff and the team uh, to get the uh, names of properties, uh, locations to be user friendly, how we treat them, whether it's by your municipality, uh, your county, your town or your city. So that is something we will, you'll see a lot of smaller communities show up and that's, we're making good progress on that. So it'll be very user friendly. So we'll turn it over to Russ and uh, uh, Lucy and I will be here if there's any questions. And of course we've got tutorials and uh, most of you are pretty up to speed on that, but we certainly can quickly go through um, uh, the use of the application if we have some time at the end. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. I appreciate the explanation. So before I turn this over to uh, Russ, I just want to say a couple words about what we're going to be talking about. At this point, you're, you're probably relatively familiar with the Zoom Prospector tool. Um, you'll know that it's mobile responsive, so we don't sacrifice any features or functionality. No matter what device people are on, they'll be able to access all of the functionality of the tools. Um, you'll notice that we've got the split screen, so you see the, the property results and the reports on the left and the map on the right. There's lots of different map tools that uh, Russ is going to talk about here today. And we also just want to show you how you can dive into the data so that you can do analysis for your community. And then, of course, how you can save things and how you can share things. Our, our share button is very, very powerful, and it's a great way to drive traffic back to the tool itself. So. That's uh, what we're going to be showing you here today. And Russ, what I'm going to do then is uh, make you the presenter and uh, let you take it away. Beautiful. Thanks, Elisa. Um, I'm going to flip my webcam off right now, too, just for uh, <clears throat> for Internet's sake. Um, but Elisa, can you uh, is everything showing up correctly? Yep, we can see the tool. Awesome. OK. Um, so thanks, um, Jay, Elisa, for the uh, for the intro and uh, sort of the roadmap on on what we're going to be going through today. I'm really really focusing on the front end of the application here and just kind of showing everybody here how to how to use it. Um, you know, many of you have uploaded properties to the system. Um, you're continuing to add stuff, but it's like okay. What can I do with it once that happens? And so this is the public facing interface um, that the world will see. Um, and you can you can see sort of just at the opening screen, we have um, a, a bunch of different sort of navigational components that are that are built into this. Um, the first one, and Jay addressed this um, in his comments, is we will be making some changes to the to the location component here. Um, as Jay mentioned, you know, we have the uh, lots of municipalities that are listed here, and so we'll be making uh, we'll be making some some changes to that. But defining location by a, a corporate boundary, being able to search by for buildings or for sites, um, a size component, uh, square footage or acres, properties that are for sale or for lease. Um, we also have different types of properties here. 
But then the other part that's kind of nice is if you use the all filters, this kind of brings all of those things into one location so that you can run your searches um, or start to define um, um, attributes that you're searching for from this, from this um, kind of inclusive um, uh, search panel here. So you can see that everything's here. We have a couple extra components here with rail access and incentives, and those are probably things that um, you'll notice when you're adding properties to the to the back end of the application that those will be check boxes that you can check if there are incentives or if there's rail access available to the uh, to the property itself. So in terms of kind of the search functionality, that is how you get to how you how you can search. Um, a couple of the other map functionalities that are here too, and you'll see that these are all going to be controlled in the map tools. Pinpoint, measure, search by address, filter area, filter radius, export. Um, so we'll just start with the pinpoint functionality. So I can actually pinpoint a location. So this is sort of at the community level where this becomes something that's um, of value to you. So I can apply that as the location. And you're going to notice that the reports are going to generate. Um, I'm running a business report. Let me go back to demographics here. Um, but I'm gonna I'm going to be able to run all these reports from the specific location that I pinpointed. So um, when we go back and we start looking at the the sites and buildings sign of search functionality and that kind of stuff, all of those are going to be generated off of a specific property. But knowing that you can kind of do this for any location within your community also helps you sort of further use the application. Um, if you're maybe working with a prospect who, you know, maybe it's in a, a different realm that's not the targeted industries that we're trying to promote here on the application, but maybe you've got a small retail group that's come to you and maybe they're looking at a corner store or something like that and they're looking for help, you know, you can just use the location, right? And, and um, kind of generate these reports around that specific dot that you've put on the map, okay? Um, so that pinpoint functionality is there. Another kind of neat little feature that we have here is the filter area. So this is allows you to draw on the map to define a specific geography that you're looking in. So this takes away sort of the corporate boundary component, and maybe this is a little bit more um, applicable at the regional level or the scale, but being able to kind of identify geography based upon drawing on something on the map. All right, and so you can see that I drew this kind of funny looking, whatever you want to call it, but now the properties that are showing up are only within the area which I've defined. Um, you can also um, do the same thing with a, with a radius. So you drop the pin on the map, you draw out how many miles or kilometers you want to go, and then you're getting a radius from a specific location too. So that's another way to define geography. So if we think about using the application, Regionally, so the entire region, when we change or when we get the, the municipalities and the counties, you know, the corporate boundaries, um, defining it by that, being able to pinpoint a location on the map, being able to draw on the map to define geography and also to do the filter radius component um, on it as well, too. So all sorts of different ways to define geography. So let's just go ahead now and look at a property. Um, so we'll, we'll drill down into this property. I didn't do necessarily do a search, but I just picked on the first one that showed up. And so um, in this, we have some information. This is the information that you guys are adding to the application, right? So the description, the property details, the availability, the sales price, the contact information is, is automatically populating um, as well too. So all of that stuff is there. But then a couple other kind of neat features that we have in here, we have the 3D virtual tour. So this is a Google Earth function where it'll take us to the specific property um, in all of Google's glory here and zoom us into the, to the location of the property. And so we can kind of see it from here and you can see that we're going, you know, circling around the property so you can see the aerial and you can see there's a bunch of different other Google functionalities that are in here as well too, that you can use to kind of look at this property in, in different ways. So that's a nice kind of add on to be able to promote, especially for, maybe more rural parts or vacant um, properties where people may want to get some context about what's around it, um, that kind of stuff that maybe the aerial photography is not um, necessarily showing. Um, the other thing that we can do with these, and um, I think 
probably in the admin um, description, the, the, the internal virtual tours of buildings. If you guys have those or those exist for properties that you're trying to market, um, we, those will also can be added. And if they are added, there will be another button that shows up here. So I just wanted everybody to understand where that functionality would show up. If you add a, uh, you know, your own virtual tour of a location, there'll be another button right here that you could click on that would take you exactly to that location. All right. Um, one of the other things that we can do um, before I start going through more of the analysis is save properties. And Elisa mentioned this in sort of the open. So you can see up here that we have this saved results component. If I want to start saving properties, let's say I've done a search, I'm working with a client, I want to save stuff. You're going to create a folder here. I'll just call this uh, let's test and I'll add the folder. Okay, so now I've created a folder. Once I've done that, if I want to start saving properties, I can save it into Rust test, right? So let's just save a few of these that have images to them just so we can do that. And um, I'll just save three of them. Oh, and here's the custom tour actually. So this property actually does have a custom tour. So let's save, we'll save that one. We'll go look at that one too. So, okay. So you can see now that I've created a folder. I have saved results. I can create multiple folders. And why this is important is because you may be working with multiple clients and it may be Friday afternoon at five o'clock and um, you know, you're done for the week or whatever it might be, or it's, you're working late on a Tuesday night and you want to come back to this on Wednesday or Thursday, you can always come back to your saved results and there's going to be folders. And so the navigational component that's here is if there were multiple folders, you'd have a drop down here of the different folders that you've saved properties to. All right, so the Rust test component, since it's the only folder I have, these are the three properties I've saved. Um, let's just go ahead and we'll look at this one just to show you how that works because that custom tour link is, is right in here as well too. Um, I didn't pick up on that originally when I was looking uh, for properties, but anyways, um, so here's the custom tour. We can click on it. Let's see what this is. So this is a, and I don't know if you guys can hear, there is audio actually that's playing with this as well too. So, um, so anyways, that's how all of that stuff, that's how that works. Um, let me get out of here and just come back. So again, the information about the property that you guys have been adding and are there documents to you can attach documents. So there's a, there's a PDF document, um, with this, with this property as well. So again, all the kind of property work that you guys are doing, this is where the fruits of that labor and where all of this stuff is, is, is showing up. The next component is to kind of do the analysis, right? And so we have these different reports that are available to you. Um, demographics, labor force, consumer spending, and business reports. Um, we use Environics um, for this. And I think if I scroll down to the bottom here, this is going to tell us that we source all of this stuff here. So Environics, I think, is updating our data twice a year. So we'll get another run here coming up pretty soon. And um, this will flip over to, to 2021. Um, but so you can get kind of the idea of the, the, the recent, the, how recent the data is that we are providing. A couple other tricks in here, being able to change, um, change distances. So let's just change this to 15 miles. I can do it here. These numbers are updating on the fly. I can also use the slider if I want to as well too. And these numbers are just going to update on the fly as I change this. Um, we also go 60 miles beyond the border of the region. So just especially for your communities that may be on the edge of, um, you know, on the edge of the regional boundary, um, we do pick up, um, you know, demographics, labor force, consumer spending outside of the, 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 the regional boundary. So we're not just putting a wall up around the, the region. Um, and saying that's it. So if somebody was, you know, again, we're not quite there, and I guess we'd be in the in Lake Ontario if uh, if we made this any bigger here. But um, you know, if this, let's say, we're on the north, and and you're near you're near Ottawa, let's say, um, you know, you would pick up some of the Ottawa demographics um, if you expanded the radius far enough um, into there. All right. Um, we can also do this by drive time as well too. Um, and so all of these reports. Um, that is an interesting looking drive time report. You may have to take a look at that because I'm convinced that it's probably not just a square. Um, 
I'm going to make a little bit of note of that. So there, there will be a different looking polygon that, that shows up here that is the drive time. Um, that's another way to do the analysis around around the property. So let's just go back to the files here. Um, again, age, race, sex. The, the, the important parts to kind of the reports for, for you guys um, is that there's different ways to view these reports. And so you're going to see we have raw numbers, we have totals, um, we have a charting functionality in here too. Let's just go down to educational attainment. So, um, you know, we have a charting. We can look at this um, in, a, in a chart format as well too. But then we can also look at it visually on the map. So turning, you know, a specific, a specific layer or a, a specific attribute on here, you can kind of now get a sense of where the concentrations are. Um, I think if I zoom in a little bit tighter, yeah, you're going to get even a little bit more definition. And this will be by the, the census dissemination area is the level of geography that we're going to have here. So, you know, just playing with the map extent and, and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you can get different concentrations and you can do this for every single one of the, the attributes that you'll find in the, the demographics, the labor force and the consumer spending. So kind of the, the, I think the takeaway here is that the data can be used or viewed in multiple different formats. So the application, you know, raw numbers, again, percentages, the charts, the, the visualness of the, of the heat mapping as well too. So, um, you know, however the website user is coming to this, that you can, or they can analyze data in different ways. So I won't spend a lot of time on the labor force and consumer spending reports themselves because they have the same functionality in here that, um, that the demographics report has. Again, the raw numbers, percentages, charts, turning stuff on and off, doing it by distance and by drive time as well too. Same for consumer spending. Um, so this is, this is um, something that's, uh, you know, the, the reports are just basically how people are spending their money. Um, but the business report, this one is kind of fun. So this is where we're mapping all the existing businesses. We default to a one mile radius. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger to get us some more results that are in here. But you can see how responsive this is, right? So this is coming back um, very quickly. I'm, I'm making a run of all the businesses within 10 miles of this dot that's on the map right here, all right? Um, and we could do a couple of interesting things here. We can also narrow this down up to six digit NAICS code if we want to. Um, we have clusters. Um, I think this is one of the things that we may um, that we may work, Jay, and we should make a note of this, um, that we should define your targeted industries as you guys are defining them right now and use this in the cluster kind of component here. This is just a, um, a, a auto-populated list that GIS planning provides um, for, for clusters, but we can configure this so that it would um, basically just show your targeted industries in the cluster dropdown um, if we want to do that. So, um, but other functionalities here, let's just turn this all off and maybe let's just look at manufacturing, for example, because I think we were kind of at a manufacturing piece here. So you can kind of start to see that, you know, to the, to the south and the west of this property, there's a high clustering of, of manufacturing, right? And if we wanted to open up one of these, Let's just do this. We'll open this up and you can kind of get a sense of kind of how many businesses. So let's just take machine shops, for example. There's eight of them in here. This is going to redraw and it's going to actually show you on the map where they are. OK, so again, if, if you or a client is doing analysis on the application and you want to, you know, really dive down deep into a, a real granular level of information about maybe what types of businesses are around a specific location or, you know, are there, are there like businesses, are there competitors, are there suppliers, are there, um, you know, are people who are working in the near, you know, in those industries, or is it the same type of workers, you know, all of this kind of stuff that you can take away from kind of this, this level of analysis that's here as well too. Okay. Um, and then the last couple of things I want to talk about, we do have some, some sort of overview profiling components that are here. Um, so every one of the communities that we define by geography are going to have these community infographics. So this is Belleville. Um, and you can see just high level stuff. So age distribution, educational attainment, labor force, talent, you know, just a quick snapshot of, of that. But where this becomes kind of fun or, or, kind of being able to use this kind of stuff is being able to kind of share this information too. And Elisa alluded to this earlier. So I'm just gonna go back here 
Um, and you can see that there is a share function that's going to be consistent across the entire kind of component of the, the entire piece of the application. I can share this email. Um, I can take this link. So I'm just actually going to do this. So just to prove to you that this works, I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to open up another, another browser here and do this. And it's going to take me back to exactly what I was looking at here and here are exactly the same. All right. So anytime you are generating content or you're developing um, information or that kind of stuff and you want to share that information either with the client or the nice part, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, your kind of your social media platforms. If you're maybe promoting a specific area within your community or you want to share a, a report that you've generated to kind of promote the community, this is what this application is built for is to allow you to get the get data off of the off of the site and be able to use it, share it, um, put it in other other places, um, all that kind of stuff. So the share functionality becomes, I think, one of the gems of this because it's again, it gives you the ability to 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 use the information in different formats that may be outside of the context of you know the 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 Ontario East application that we're looking at right here. Um, so just one other piece too, just so everyone's aware, we do have some map layers here that are, and we, we may be adding more of these too, but just, just so you understand the functionality of how to turn layers of information on and off, this is the rail network um, here. So if you wanted to generate a map with this on it, you could actually even export the map from here if you wanted to use it in a different different context as well too. So. Um, again, all sorts of different ways, all sorts of different pieces to the puzzle that are here that we've brought together to build this sort of front end that gives folks that don't live in the Ontario East region kind of a, a, a snapshot of what you guys are up to, the communities that make up the Ontario East region, and then sort of the, the analytical components of, you know, being able to do re or build reports, share those reports, and communicate with your client base. So, Alisa, that gets us, I think we have about five or six minutes left and I haven't really yeah. been, if there are questions or not, but. Um, yes, we do of... have a few questions actually. I'll read them out for you. Okay. Um, uh, this, the first one is a, with the radius tool for demographics, labor force, et cetera. Because we border <laughs> the St. Lawrence River, the radius shows up into the US. Are the U.S. numbers included in the data, or is it in fact just Canadian data that was just can, at this point? It's just Canadian data. Um, we have been working on a project um, to try and take some of the high-level data that we can sort of that we can that we can equate between our U.S. data and our Canadian data. Uh, that hasn't fully happened yet, but it is something that we are aware of. We work with a number of of communities that do border the US. So today it is just the Canadian data, but I believe at some point in the future um, it will incorporate um, the US data as well too. The, 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 the biggest issue, just so everyone here understands on why that is, is that we have different um, we have different demographic um, components in the US that we have in Canada. Um, Canadian data is a little bit more restrictive than the U.S. data, um, and so matching stuff up so that we're getting a sort of an apples to apples report um, is is um, something that we that we don't have um, right now. But we're we're working on a solution for that. Well, and and yeah. Russ, I I think the question was probably in the context we probably don't need that information. It, it's okay. not that. Okay. Okay. Well, and again, if you don't want it, you don't have to have it. But I just, as in a general statement, Jay, um, yeah, I mean, if uh, if if that's something that becomes an issue or of something that's wanted, um, you know, I think that that solution is coming at some point in the future. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, and uh, David wants to know if you could explain the percentages. Uh, and uh, that was towards the beginning, I guess, in the reports themselves. Uh, and, sure. and if you had a specific report where you were looking for, for an explanation about those percentages, if you would just. Well, we can just we can talk about it here. So the percentages are basically just taking, you know, so the zero to four population in the 10 mile radius around this location is 4.46% of the total 
population. So basically, the percentages are just taking the it's the percentage of what's in the um, kind of the the cohort that we're looking at here. In, t in terms of the total, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Hopefully that addresses your question, David. Um, if anyone else has any additional questions uh, that you want to put in there, then you can. Um, just as a, a in terms of accessing data, I know this is something that you showed, uh, Russ, but I do like to underscore it. The community data tab at the top, so where you can uh, at the very top there, so you can actually go in and find your specific um, area and do a lot of the reporting um, information from there. And then of course that share button that we were talking about. So the share button there gives you a link that you can uh, post somewhere and people can come back there. So for social media, for your marketing of all different kinds, link placement on your website. If you wanna be linking to the tool and you wanna link to it um, to bring people directly to the reports for your community, um, that is uh, an option there. Yeah, um, and, and also one other thing too that's kind of cool that, um, so for each one of these little sections that's in here and you can tell they're blocked off, you could actually, if you wanted to download the image yeah. and use that even in something else, a piece of marketing that you may have or something like that, each one yeah. of these little sections is downloadable as well too. So, and you can just see it from the, the dot, dot, dot component that's here. So. Yeah, so that's um, that's also something that if you were, you know, using, you know, maybe not sharing it somewhere, but you were using it in some report you were generating or something like that, you could also take these snapshots of these images and then put them other places as well too. Yeah, I've seen clients use them on LinkedIn or use them in newsletters and then pair the image with a link so they come back to the, the site itself. I actually have a clarification of the question from David. He's interested oh. in percentages of OC codes and NAICS codes. Oh, oh, in the business. Um, okay. So the... Thanks, David, for clarifying. Yeah, let's just get to the business report here. So these percentages that you're seeing right here, um, this is the, the total percentage of the businesses that are in this sector. Um, and so you can see if there's... It, we're within one mile of this location. And so you know, there is one business that's in this one mile radius. And so that makes up 0.95% of the total businesses that we're looking at within this radius right here. So that's the percentage functionality. Um, the NAICS code component um, allows you to search, and I don't know my NAICS codes that well, it's something I should probably bring up better, but you can search up to six digit NAICS code at the NAICS code level if you're looking for a specific um, specific type. So. I don't even, let's see, let's just try two. Okay, so 23 is construction, okay? So I only went to 23 because that's that's two digits, but I can go all the way out to six. Um, in this case, within one mile of this, this location that we're looking at right here, there are two construction businesses which fall within the NAICS code classification 23, you know, dot, 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 dot. Right, so this is how you can do that NAICS code search as well too, is if you knew specific NAICS codes, and again, understanding that you're, you know, in this case, you're limited to the one mile radius around here, I can make this bigger. Um, let's just see if this expands. Let's just go to the 10 miles. And now you can see that there's 26 in that, that you know, 23 level NAICS code in there as well too. So, so this is what the, that functionality is there for. So he says he had an example of it turn up with over 100% of NAICS codes. So uh, oh, that, as I with think. With over 100% of NAICS codes? Okay, well, uh, maybe we can take that offline or he can send us or, you know. Okay, David. Well, we can. We have your email address cool. from the registration, so we can reach out to you if you want to help, it, help you figure that out. Uh, excuse me. I'm getting um, a couple of emails from one of the attendees, Rob mm -hmm. Hunter. Um, he said, did his question show up in the chat? Have you guys gotten anything from Rob Hunter? So I did. I see a question that we talked about at the beginning about uh, whether U.S. numbers are included in the data that uh, Russ was talking about. And then he said uh, there was another question before leaving the reports. It'd be good to address if U.S. data is included. So I think we addressed that. Um, and I guess he was suggesting that if we look at Brockville or Cornwall, we could see how the radius shows up because those are so close. And I, I guess that's, and, and Rob, 
forgive me if I'm not understanding your questions. If you want to uh, come in and clarify that, let me know and I'm happy to uh, unmute you if you'd like to explain your question to us better. Um, and of course, uh, you will have our contact information, Rob, and all of you in the follow-up email with this video. So anything that we don't address here in the webinar, we're very happy to uh, to assist you with to make sure that you uh, have the answers that you need afterwards. Were there any, was there anything else, Lucy, that we've missed? Uh, the only other comment from Rob Hunter is that based on the discussion that we had about uh, whether or not data from the U.S. was showing up in uh, in those searches, uh, so Rob suggests a disclaimer that expresses that even though the radius map might show into the U.S., that it's only Canadian data that's being picked up. Yeah, that's an interesting question. That's something we can certainly discuss with, uh, with the team. It's a good idea. Um, okay, then I think that uh, brings me back to uh, bring us back to the end. I'm just going to put some uh, contact information up here on the screen. I will include this, of course, in the follow up email that you'll get by tomorrow with the link to this video. Um, I assume most of you have Jay's contact information as well. Um, but we uh, you can reach us at support at GIS planning or myself at ASPLAR at gsplanning.com. Yeah, Alyssa, Alyssa and yeah, Lucy's name should be on there as well. Uh, she, she's in contact with these folks quite uh, okay. regularly. Um, but thank you for that. And uh, one of the things I did want you to touch on before we go was uh, the need to, to market the site now that we have it uh, functioning. Um, so if you could just touch on that a bit, and we will work with you guys to, to do a, uh, an official launch. Uh, the one thing I'm really hoping with our members is this will be a great tool for our members to derive responses to calls for um, requests for property, which we put out on quite a regular basis. So um, we're hoping that people can migrate to taking advantage of this tool if, the, if they need that support and can then pull together their proposal, send it through to Ontario East where we can then disseminate it to the clients. So that's uh, that's another advantage of this tool. Uh, and Jay, have we, have we done the proposal training piece for the members yet? We have not, no. Okay. So. That would be something we definitely. So maybe could that's do. a good thing for us to because I mean there's a whole proposal generation system on the backside of this where they you know if you if you guys post those RFIs or RFQs they can respond within that that proposal system as well too. We, we got, a, we got an overview of them the last time that we had Jeff give us a, yeah. a bit and gave us an overview of everything uh, of the proposal component and it was very very impressive so. I can include yeah. a link to the video um, of our overview of the proposal generator, sure. so that way you guys can see it um, on there. Yeah, it's drag and drop, and we really designed it. It's it's like a Google Docs. It's live, and you can collaborate in real time virtually. And of course, even if you've sent the proposal, you can, and a new property comes up, you can add that, and it will be instantly reflected for uh, the, on the on the delivery end. So. Sure, and yeah, and that's you know, as we as we learn the tool, I think that's something mm -hmm. that people will be more acclimatized to. It's certainly not an yep. expectation at this stage. But the other thing, uh, you know, all of our what have we got? 18 uh, members online here. They all have day jobs. On top of that, they work with Ontario East. So we're trying to make it as seamless and as automated as possible. So uh, and again, that's why having this sort of ongoing support and training is helpful because. Uh, when you're learning some new tools like this, it's something you might not retain unless you're actually in using it. Yeah. And the key thing today was just to highlight again the 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 power of this tool and making sure we take advantage of it because uh, uh, I think it's something that's really going to be benefit all of our our members in the region for sure. So. And I could just say a couple words about how we're going to support your marketing as the tool goes live. We have a list of over 16,000 site selectors, uh, managers, uh, investors, economic developers all over the world. And so once we've worked together on a, a news release of some kind, we can push that out. It'll go on our company blog. We'll be pushing it across all our social feeds. Uh, I'll have a turnkey piece of creative, an image basically that shows a screenshot of it and a few bullet points with the URL that you can use online. And then newsletters and other kinds of promotion. Um, and we're happy to work with you to support any additional marketing that you would like. We have a lot of training and a lot of resources that we can provide and offer. Excellent, Alyssa, that's great. We will be, we're just coming up to our year end and we'll, we're planned to launch very early into the new uh, year beginning. And uh, that that's, I wanted to make sure the team was aware of that as we as we do all of our marketing uh, going into the next, uh, into the next year. So, um, 
thank you so much. And Russ, I know Chris is out there. He's not a, a panelist, but I'm sure he's passing on his greetings to you. And unfortunately, uh, hello, yes, we, we didn't get to see Edco, anybody at Edco this year. And uh, but uh, in our conference next year, uh, you know, it's leaning towards virtual again, but we're getting used to it. And go, what is this one called? We're on today. So this is my fifth go to webinar, my fifth <laughs> platform this week. So uh, it seemed to work pretty well, except we have people can't talk to us but that's okay we wanted them to listen today right so yeah well and and, and uh i will be happy to make my way up to the the wonderful country of canada when y'all let me back in there so uh i got i got that one going for me too right so <laughs> exactly yes okay well uh again thank you all uh and lucy thank you and uh Appreciate this uh, this update. And what I'm suggesting probably is we'll look at maybe doing something uh, on the other aspects of it. And uh, again, we'll see how uh, let's see your report generating uh, tutorial goes. And uh, I'll, I'll check in with you and the team later to see if we might need a little more uh, enhanced uh, training on that. Fantastic. Happy to do it. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Thank All right. You. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks, Jay. We appreciate working with you. Thanks to all of you for taking time out of your days and Russ for your explanation. Be well, stay safe. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye now. Bye.